Good morning, New Life Community Church. You know what I love so much about this church is we like to visit. Too loud, too loud. And I get so busy visiting with people that I forget I'm supposed to be up here. So, And you know what? I think that's a good thing. We love one another in this church, and I think that's a good thing. I'm happy about that. So, welcome. Get all wired up and ready to go. How many of you know that this is Pentecost Sunday? Yep, a few of you know that. How many of you know what Pentecost is? Yay, and you're going to be hearing a little bit more about that later this this morning when Heinz brings his message. But... uh, In the meantime, we just want to welcome the presence of the Holy Spirit. I've said this before, I'm going to tell you again, and I really want you to keep thinking about it, so I'm going to keep reminding you of it. We're praying for revival, and revival is happening in this church. More and more people, yes, amen, hallelujah. More and more people are catching that vision. More and more people are getting on board with that, and we want to just... We want to be a city on a hill that can't be hid. We want to shine our light so brightly in this county that people will be like, what is going on at that church downtown Stony Plain? That's the people we need to be, people that are on fire for Jesus, that are out ministering to the lost, that are just serving in any capacity they possibly can because they love the Lord. And that happens when the Holy Spirit is in you, when the Holy Spirit is prompting you and moving you and guiding you and saying, go, and we go. Amen? We're so looking forward to what God is, is doing in this place. So some of us in the, in the leadership just got off a really intensive workshop yesterday. Super good. Glad to be doing it. It's called Freedom in Christ. When this program comes to you guys in the fall, I am highly recommending that you go through the program is going to blow your socks off and change your world. And we're looking forward to it. Thank you, Colleen. Thank you so much. So let's stand. <laughs> Hallelujah. And let's just, let's just worship the Lord. But first, let's just welcome him in, in praise and in prayer this morning. Father, we are so grateful to be in this place today. We are so grateful for you. Thank you, Jesus, that you sent the Holy Spirit when you left. You didn't abandon us. You didn't leave us. You promised that you would be with us forever, and you are here, and we are grateful. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being in our midst. Thank you for the work that you want to do in our hearts. Lord, I pray that you will just touch each and every heart that's here this morning. I pray you'll touch each and every heart that's listening online. Not only touch them, Lord, but just blow open the doors of their heart, Lord, and just let them receive your joy and your presence, Lord, that we will just be better and stronger together because of you. We just invite you into this place this morning, and we want to give you all of our praise and all of our worship. In the name of Jesus, I ask this. Amen. Amen. Who's ready to worship God this morning? Who is ready? Hallelujah. We're going to start out with this is amazing grace. I love the words of the song. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder? Who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder? Boy, if you can't say Jesus, we want to talk to you afterwards because I'd like to introduce you to this Jesus. Amen. Who breaks the power? Of sin and darkness, whose love is mighty and so much stronger, that King of glory, that King above all kings, who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder, who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder, that King of glory, that King above all kings.
Lord, for who you are and what you have done, that you would take us, Lord, you would take our sin away, that you would die in our place. Oh, God, we worship you this morning. We worship you, and we say that you are good. You are a good God, and we love you. We love you so much. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I want to scream it out from every mountain top. Your goodness knows no bounds. Your goodness never stops. Your mercy follows me. Your kindness fills my life. Your love amazes me. And I'll sing because you are good. And I'll dance because you are good. And I'll shout. Good, and I'll shout because you are good. 
you are good to me and with a cry of praise my heart will proclaim you are good you are good and in the sun rain, my life celebrates you are good Good and I'll shout because you are good. You are good to me. Hallelujah! I'll sing because you are good and I'll. praise you in this place this morning. Lord, we worship you in this house this morning. How many of you can say God is good? Can you say God is good? Can you think of one thing he's done good for you this week? Hallelujah. I got up this morning. That was pretty good. Hallelujah. I'm excited about what God is doing for us. And man, I'm just excited for what he's doing in my life. I just bless him every day and I want to praise him every day. Every day, every day. Your love is devoted Like a ring of solid gold Like a vow that is tested Like a covenant of old And your love for today faithful you have been and faithful you will be you pledge yourself to me and it's why I sing your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will ever be Close. 
this morning we worship you this morning Lord we just want to say that even when there's no music we will praise you we will worship you Lord 
We're so grateful for the instruments that you've given us and the voices that you've allowed us to sing with. But Lord, when there's none of that, will we still praise you? And I say yes. Yes, we will. Yes, we will. Hallelujah. When the music fades and all is stripped away and I simply come longing just to bring something that's of worth that will bless your bring you more than a song over a song in itself is not what you have required you search much deeper within through the way things appear you're looking into my heart I'm coming stand and pray with us Heavenly Father we thank you that we can come and we can gather we can worship and we can praise and it is you Jesus it is you that we are worshiping and praising today and we thank you that you came that you were born into this world that you showed us how to live, that you would die for our sins, that you would be resurrected, that you would show yourself for 40 days to a multitude of people. You would ascend into heaven, and then you would say, wait for just a little while, and then you sent your Holy Spirit. And your Holy Spirit is with us, and we thank you for that person of God. <laughs> Oh, we praise you for that. We praise you for the Spirit. We praise you that the Spirit fills us. We praise you that the Spirit leads us. We praise you that the Spirit teaches us and directs us and convicts us. We praise you that the Spirit guides us and that the Spirit testifies to us and that the Spirit guarantees us and seals us. And we thank you for all of that, Lord. Oh, we praise you this Pentecost Sunday for all that you have done. 
What an amazing work you did. What an amazing work that you continue to do. And I pray this amazing work would be at work in us. I pray that your power would be at work in us. I pray, Lord God, that we will be a changed people, a revived people, a blessed people. And Lord, you know that there are those amongst us today that are believing you for some things. They're believing you today to bring healing to their bodies. And so I pray that you would show them that you can do that and that you still will do that. So bring healing to the body. There are some here amongst us, whether in person or online, that are believing you for a financial miracle. They're destitute financially. And they're believing you that you will do something amazing. And so, Lord, I pray that this would be the week that you would do that. You would put food on their tables again. Help them pay their bills. Help them meet ends meet. And Lord, there are those amongst us today that have been praying a long time for family and friends. And we have been praying for their salvation. And we are believing you for that. And that is your work as well. And so we pray that you would save our families. We pray that you would save our friends. We pray that you would save our neighbors. We pray, Lord God, that the love of Jesus would enter into their lives and change them forevermore. Transform them, Lord, into what you would want them to be. And Father, we have been praying for the church. <laughs> We've been praying for a recovery. We have been praying, Lord God, that you would draw people. We have pr been praying, Lord, that you would send us out and that you would give us a proclamation, a prophecy. We pray, Lord God, that you would do these things and so much more. We are here to worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated, family. So good that you could be here today. And for those that don't know me, I'm Pastor Heinz Jansen. And welcome to those that are visiting for the first time. As well, for those that are uh, listening in online, if this is your first time, we want to welcome you. But would you give a shout out to those that are worshiping with us online today? Would you say hello to them? Yeah, we have a mass gathering in person and we have a, a sort of a mass gathering that's sort of scattered all over online. So wherever they're listening in from today, we want them to know that they're, that they're um, acknowledged and that uh, we're looking forward to maybe meeting some of these good people uh, in person. And from time to time, people do come. And uh, for whatever reasons, um, for a multitude of reasons, they can't always be here. So uh, we're glad that we have that online presence as well. There's some things that I want to bring to your attention. And so, hey, Ken, can I get you to just go to the back table and grab me one of those door hanger brochures, please? And uh, I want to promote that here today, too. And so the Great Canadian Awakening is coming here to the Edmonton and greater area. And so we get to host the Tommy Zito evangelistic team on uh, Monday, June 19, and that's just coming up real fast, and I need you prayer warriors to be praying about this, because I'm asking for an anointing upon our church congregation. I'm asking for an anointing upon Stony Plain and Parkland County, Spruce Grove, and all these areas. Thank you, Ken. You're a good man. And so I'm asking for these things to be happening, and I need you to be praying, and I need you to be participating in this. And so we're going to be going out, and we're going to be telling people about Jesus. Aren't you looking forward to being able to do that, to tell someone about Jesus? And we're going to make it easy for you. And so if you're like many and uh, you're, you're a little nervous about doing that, just simply slip one of these on a door hanger. And so what this will do is promote our church and let people know that we've been by and that we are in the neighborhood and that we are in this community and we're not here to, 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 to be a pain and a burden to the neighborhood, but we want to be able to contribute to this community, to this community of people that are around us. And so I'm going to ask you to, before you leave today, grab one of these brochures have a good look at it, and maybe you're not even sure as to what the church offers. But this will tell you all about it. And so um, what do you think of the colors? Can you see the colors from here? 
Aren't they wonderful? I love it. Absolutely love it. It's colorful. It's got blues and reds and all greens and all kinds of stuff. This is our sort of our church logo colors. And so it's attractive. And so we want to be attractive as God's people. We want people to, to, to be attracted to us because the Spirit is in us. Amen? And so what are they really attracted to? Not you so much, I'm sorry to say, but the Lord who is in you. That's who they're really attracted to. And so you might look beautiful and, and pretty and handsome and all that. Absolutely. And I encourage you to continue to do that. But it's Jesus who is in you that they're attracted to. We want to tell them about the Lord. That's coming up. So grab these. We're going to be giving them out. And where there's opportunity to be able to share our testimony with someone, we're going to have that opportunity. That's a Monday. Starts at 9 o'clock. Goes till 9 o'clock at night. It's a marathon of a day. But these evangelists are leading us through this. And so you're not alone in this, all right? They've been anointed to do this by God. And that anointing is going to be on us as well. And I'm grateful for that. Congregational prayer this coming Saturday. What a great time for us to be praying about that evangelism stuff that's happening and about the revival of our church and, and God getting ready for the bride that is the church, that is us. This Saturday, June 11, here at 1030, we're going to be praying. Would you be able to come out this Saturday? Is there anybody camping this Saturday? Raise your hands. Okay, I'm expecting one person not to be here. All right, the rest of you said you're not camping. So, hey, Canadians, let's get together and let's pray. Give me one hour. Give me one hour. Please, give me one hour. That's all I'm asking. One hour. 10.30 Saturday. This is an hour of power. Give me one hour. Put your one finger up like this. One. You still got nine others. You've got 23 hours more to deal with in that day. Please give me one hour. Prayer is important. If we don't gather for prayer as a church, this place ain't going anywhere. That revival that's coming isn't going to happen. The evangelism stuff that's coming here on the 20, 19th throughout isn't going to make a difference if we as the church are not praying. Give me one hour. How many hours do I need from you on Saturday? One. 10.30 here at the church. One hour. Please, let's pray. Let's pray. Hey, there's coffee and snacks for you. If you want to get here a bit early on Sundays, come and hang out. Grab a chair, sit in the foyer, get to meet somebody, fellowship with someone, have a coffee, an iced tea, a little something to eat. Let's do that again. At the end of the month, we are going to celebrate you all. That's what we're going to be celebrating. And so we're going to celebrate the volunteerism in this church, but we're also going to celebrate people. And so the last Sunday of this month, we're going to have a barbecue here at the church, and we're going to promote that a little bit more. Hot dogs are going to be provided, but we're going to ask you to bring a little something to share with the rest of us, like a salad or a dessert or something. But the main thing is going to be provided for you. You looking forward to that? We'll eat downstairs. We'll have a barbecue outside. It's going to smell so great in our neighborhood that we're going to have people coming over. All right? I am excited about it. I'm excited about it. Whew. Felt like I just had a workout. I do the stairs here a few times, eh? It's good for you. Get my steps in. How many of you do the steps thing? 10,000 steps a day. Yeah, there's a few of you. And when they say get your 10,000 steps and they're not saying steps like these traditional steps, just walk a little bit is what that's all about. I try and do that. And so when I meet with people during the summer, I try and get out to a park and take you for a walk if you've got mobility. And so uh, if you don't, then, or if, or if I don't, uh, sometimes we just sit down and uh, we, we, we hang out that way. But, uh, you know, it's summer. Let's get out there as much as possible. Even if you've got a walker or whatever, get out and smell the roses. Get out and get some of that beautiful uh, scent of what, what's growing on the trees right now is beautiful. Have you seen the pinks and the whites and all the different colors? My daughter and myself went for a walk last week in Edmonton, and I had to stop almost at every tree and get a good smell, a good scent of what was there. It's absolutely amazing. It just perks me right up perks me right up. You know what else perks me up? 
the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit revives me. The Holy Spirit took a man who was dead in his transgressions, a man who was dead spiritually, and brought me to life. That is what the Holy Spirit has done for me. Oh, And I can smell the roses now. I can see them. And I can smell the coffee. And I can taste the good food. And I love to live because of the Holy Spirit. I love to live this life. And at times this life isn't easy to live, but I want to live it. I want to live it to its fullest. I want to thrive in this life. And the only reason I can thrive is because of the Holy Spirit that is at work in me. The Holy Spirit has changed my life. I used to think things were dark and black and critical and negative, and now I see things positively. I see the cup half full instead of half empty. I see light, not darkness. I see potential, not problem, because of the Holy Spirit. He has given me perspective. The Holy Spirit teaches us. The Holy Spirit guides us. The Holy Spirit leads us. The Holy Spirit revives us. The Holy Spirit blesses us. And those days when it seems negative, the Holy Spirit comes into your life and says, you are mine and I am yours. He seals our salvation. The Holy Spirit testifies to us. The Holy Spirit convicts us. Do you know that I had a conviction yesterday? I found myself complaining. Even after freedom in Christ, an all-day intensive, there I was at home vacuuming and I was complaining. (laughs) can you believe it all day long the spirit doesn't speak to me until I get home until I get home and he says those that you're complaining about I can take them from you I can take them from you you know what happened to me in that moment I almost fell to my knees in agony and said, God, don't let that be so. He spoke to me so strongly. The Holy Spirit is that voice in our conscience that says, if it's so bad for you, we can change this. Lord, it's not so bad. I'll vacuum. (laughs) I'll vacuum. It's not so bad. The Holy Spirit. Today's Pentecost Sunday. Absolutely amazing. Pentecost Sunday. Let me just give you a little background on that. We're going to be into Acts chapter 2 for the main text today, but we're going to also be looking at Acts chapter 1. I need us to go through the preamble for us to understand what's going on in Acts chapter 2. And so I hope as you read the scriptures for yourself that you're not just reading certain portions of the Bible, but that you're reading what leads up to the events of what's going on. And then you read a little further to find out the follow-up afterward and what is going on there. But a careful reading of Acts 2 reveals that when the Holy Spirit was poured out, there was a multitude of devout Jews who were in Jerusalem and they were celebrating, just like we were celebrating this morning, praising God on Sunday. They were doing it in in, uh, Jerusalem back in the day and they were celebrating the Feast of Weeks and they were celebrating the Feast of Harvest and they were celebrating the Day of First Fruits. Pentecost. They were celebrating. Do you celebrate? I sure hope you do. I hope you don't mourn the past. I hope that you don't lament things gone by, but I hope that you celebrate what is happening today. I hope that you remember the good things that God has done for you because that's what they were doing in their day and age. That's what they were doing when the Holy Spirit swept in. Yeah. Shavat, the Hebrew word, is for Pentecost. And it has a harvest component to it. In other words, they were bringing sacrifice to God. What did you bring today for sacrifice when you came to praise and worship God? What did you bring? Did you come expecting people to pour into you? Or did you come ready to pour into others? What did you bring? Because that's what worship is all about. 
It's not waiting to be filled all the time. Because we're filled when we come to faith in Jesus, and I'll explain that to you in a moment. But worship is also about bringing our entire being and sacrificing everything. There were some thoughts that were going through my mind today where the, where the Lord just wants to take me back into things I've got to do and I've got to accomplish, and I could fight that in my mind, and God is saying, would you stop thinking about those things and worship me? Sacrifice means stop worrying and praise and worship God for this hour. Give me an hour, I told you earlier. Well, give me another hour right now, would you? That makes two hours. That makes two hours. But you got a whole week ahead of you. What are you going to do with the rest of your life? One hour to come and praise and worship, and another hour to come and pray. That's two hours. What are you going to do with the rest of your life? Wow, you got a lot of time to spend. Lots of time. Lots of time. Pentecost, 50 days after the first Passover. Moses had received the tablets of stone, is what this is commemorating. Mount Sinai sort of experience. We have Passover. Um, we have these things that are happening. The Jews are coming into Jerusalem. They're, they're celebrating the, the Feast of Weeks and Harvest and First Fruits to commemorate all the different things that happened in their history. But we are Judeo-Christians, and guess what? Everything that they were celebrating, everything that happened in their history is our history as well. And I want to take you back into your roots to say that these are our roots and we need to be celebrating and we need to understand these things that they did. And maybe we need to get on board with some of the stuff and celebrate as well. The Holy Spirit was poured out and in a manner that recalled the presence of God in the Mount Sinai event, but this time with a rushing wind and tongues of fire. Family, there have been times that I have prayed over you, and I've been in other churches praying, and my back is on fire. Do you think that's likened to the tongues of fire that we're hearing about, spoken about? Heat. It just absorbs my back. And there's been times when people have come up to me afterward and said, did you know what you said to me in prayer? And I said, well, I wasn't actually saying anything to you individually. I was praying a general prayer. God spoke to me, they said. Amazing. Amazing. How many of you have experienced things like that? You're anointed. The Holy Spirit is with you. Even if you haven't experienced that today, I'm going to give you an opportunity after the service to come and receive the Holy Spirit. In Jeremiah 31, Jeremiah prophesied that unlike the Sinai covenant, the Mosaic covenant, which their fathers broke, the new covenant through Jesus Christ would accomplish the setting of God's law within them and the writing of it on their hearts. I was in a prayer meeting two weeks ago and a woman came up to me and she put her hand on me and she prayed over me. And she said, I see two things going on in your life. It's like she saw into my heart. I see that the doorposts of your heart have the blood of Jesus on them. And I see the law of God written on your heart. I can't forget this. I can't forget this. It was the Holy Spirit through this person that reminded me that I am confident in my salvation, that I am confident in Jesus. Christ's blood means everything to me. He has forgiven me. And His law means everything to me. Every time I break it, I feel a conviction of His Holy Spirit to say, why? You didn't have to. And then he reminds me over and over again, Heinz, when you can't keep my laws, I keep them for you. I keep them for you. And yet I still want to, to perk up and I still want to do better. It drives me to want to do better, not in a bad way, not in a negative way, but in a way to say I don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit anymore. I don't want to grieve you I want to do right by you. 
Oh, the days are coming. Jeremiah 31, 31 to 33 says, The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt because they broke my covenant. Though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord, this is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. Where is the law of God written? It is on our hearts. It is on our hearts. And may he see that the blood of Jesus is on the doorpost of your heart and the law of God written there as well. Hmm. You know, the Apostle Paul in the New Testament explains this in Romans 8, 3-4. He reiterates what was written in Jeremiah 31 and said that the Holy Spirit would enable believers to fulfill the righteous requirements of the law, still not perfectly because we have our bad days, but with a newly available power from His indwelling presence. Romans 8, 3 to 4, the days are coming, declares the Lord. You think I just repeated Jeremiah. Listen to this. Paul said it. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt because they broke my covenant. Though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord, this is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and I will write it on their hearts I will be their God and they will be my people wow it's reiterated in the New Testament what was said in the old didn't change it was brought forth into the new where is God God is with you and I and he is in our soul he has revived our spirit And Pentecost is a reminder today that the Holy Spirit, the person of God, the Holy Spirit, now indwells you and me, those who have said yes to Jesus. And Gentiles are included in this. That's you and I. We're grafted in. Have you ever seen a grafting ever before your very eyes? I've seen a grafting of a part of a tree. We went and we bought a linden tree, and we were going to plant that, and we've had some horrible success with our linden trees. We put in six. There's about two that are doing really well, and we probably pay too much. But one of these trees had this spot on top, and they had grafted this piece of the tree into into the original piece, and it grew greatly. And it became a part of that tree. And that's what you and I have become. We are growing greatly. We have been grafted into the original tree. We have Judeo-Christian heritage. And we celebrate with all of the Jewish nation. And we are Gentile people that are now brought into the family of God. Paul writes in Romans eleven thirteen to 21 that the root supports us Gentile believers. I am talking to Gentiles, he says, inasmuch as I am the apostle to the Gentiles, I take pride in my ministry in the hope that I may somehow arouse my own people to envy and save some of them. Oh, he tried, but he had struggles to bring the Jewish nation. So he went to the Gentiles. For if their rejection brought reconciliation to the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? And if the part of the dough offered as first fruits is holy, then the whole batch is holy. If the root is holy, so are the branches. If some of the branches have broken off, and you, though a wild olive shoot, have been grafted in among the others, and now share in the nourishing sap from the olive tree, do not consider yourself to be superior to those other branches. Israel is not superior to the Gentile nation. The Gentile nation is not superior to Israel. We are equal. We are siblings. We are a family. In World War II, guess what Hitler tried to do? Divide the family. He wanted to annihilate the Jewish nation. What do you think people still do today? They try and annihilate the Jewish nation. And if they try and take out Israel, they're also going to try and take out Christians. 
because we are part of the same family. And so when they are at war with Israel, they are at war with all of Christianity. When the enemy comes against Israel, the enemy comes against all of God's people. Why do you think so many people fight for Israel who are Christians? Because they understand their heritage. And they understand that we are one in the family of God. In verse 18, do not consider yourself to be superior to those other branches. If you do, consider this. You do not support the root, but the root supports you. You will say then, branches were broken off so that I could be grafted in. Granted, but they were broken off because of unbelief, and you stand by faith. Do not be arrogant, but tremble. For if God did not spare the natural branches, he will not spare you either. That was Romans 11, 13 to 21. Reverend Don James, who's a part of Bridges to Peace Canada, your Israel connection, in his commentary on Pentecost, encourages us with the words, May the Lord bless you richly in these days. He is strongly on the move, restoring his chosen people to their land and restoring his Gentile church to our biblical and Hebraic roots. May he be strongly on the move in every dimension of your ministry. What a blessing. What a blessing. Pentecost Sunday is a celebration of the Holy Spirit given to all who receive Him. I want to read for you, and this is kind of how I want to end it. I want to read for you chapter 2 of Acts, but before we get there, I want to read through chapter 1. I want to give a little bit of a narrative here. I want you to understand what was going on before the Holy Spirit was given. Chapter 1 of Acts. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day that he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles that he had chosen. After his suffering... He showed himself to these men and he gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. He said, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift that my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was on its way. Very much like the whole, that, that God, through Jesus Christ, is back on His way to return. And the Holy Spirit hadn't been given yet this 2,000 years ago. Verse 6, And so when they met together, they asked Him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of, to Israel? And He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by His own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. There has been power on me many times going and doing cold contact with people in the workplace of all places and saying to someone, do you want to know what this Jesus has done for me? And having a captive audience for a half an hour. Of course, I had to work a half an hour later that day to make up for the time that I spent for them to hear how Jesus entered into my life. And this is what Jesus can do for you as well. In verse 9, after he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes and a cloud hid him from their sight. And they were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, Why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who was taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way that you have seen him go into heaven. That was the promise given to them 2,000 years ago. It is still a promise given for you and I today. This prophecy has not yet been fulfilled. Jesus is still going to return but before he is going to return literally in the person of Jesus he sent the person of the Holy Spirit 
They didn't know this. <laughs> Many of them were thinking, oh, Jesus is going to come again, and we're going to have a barbecue. <laughs> we're going to sit around the fire, and we're going to hear him tell these good stories again. We're going to watch him do miracles, and we're going to, we're going to see him cast out demons. And Jesus knew better than that, and he said, all oh, these people, if they only knew, if they only knew that they're going to be the ones now to cast out demons, that they're going to be the ones now to set the captive free. Oh, you know, we sometimes think, oh, these disciples, these apostles, they must have been some pretty smart people. Uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> no smarter than you and I. No smarter than you and I. They were just as human. Just as human. Hmm. Verse 12 of chapter 1. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives. The Sabbath day's walk from the city. How long is the Sabbath day? The whole day. <laughs> 24 hours. It took 24 hours to get there. And when they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. And those that were present there, listen to this this list of people. Peter was there. John was there. I wish I was there. Oh, I wish I was there. James was there, and so was Andrew. And Philip and Thomas and Bartholomew and Matthew. Guess who else was there? James, son of Alphaeus. And Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James, was also there. And they all joined together constantly in prayer. So I'm asking you for one hour on Saturday. One hour. Are we that busy? Are we busier than those disciples back in the day? They were some busy people. They were committed to gathering for prayer constantly. Constantly. Along with the women. So it wasn't just the men. So We hope to see some women here on Saturday too. And Mary, the mother of Jesus, was also there, as were Jesus' brothers. Verse 15. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers. Peter was a pretty bold guy, wasn't he? Would you agree? Some say that he was kind of like a bull in a china shop. Do you all know what that means? He's a little rough. He's a little crude, but he gets the message across because you take notice when a bull goes through a china shop, but you got to clean some things up afterward, right? That's kind of how he was. And so if you're like that, that's fine. If God can use Peter, he can use you. He can use you. And in those days, Peter, he stood up among the believers, a group numbering about 120. And he said, brothers, the scripture had to be fulfilled which the Holy Spirit spoke long ago through the mouth of David concerning Judas, who served as guide for those who arrested Jesus. He was one of our number and shared in this ministry. With the reward he got for his wickedness, Judas bought a field. There he fell headlong, his body burst open, and all his intestines spilled out. You know, they were mourning Judas, because he was amongst them. And we mourn when those who have walked with us in Jesus' name fall away. What do you think we're doing post-COVID right now? We're counting. Where are they all? Where'd they all go? Where are the young families? Where are the children? Doesn't anybody raise their children in the church anymore? You ever ask those questions? Yeah. They were lamenting. And so do we. Everyone, verse 19, in Jerusalem heard about this. That was Judas' death and everything that had happened there. And they called that field in their language, Akeldama, that is the field of blood. And for, said Peter, it is written in the book of Psalms, may his place be deserted, let there be no one to dwell in it, and may another take his place of leadership. And guess what? They needed to bring about another disciple another apostle. Therefore, it is necessary to choose one of the men who have been with us the whole time the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from John's baptism to the time when Jesus was taken up from us. For one of these must become a witness with us. For one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. So they proposed two men, Joseph called Barsabbas, also known as Justice, and Matthias. 
Then they prayed, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which of these two you have chosen to take over the apostolic ministry which Jesus left to go where he belongs. Then listen carefully to this. Then they cast lots to figure out who it would be that would become this apostle. And the lot fell to Matthias, and so he was added to the 11 apostles. And did you know that never again is casting lots ever mentioned in the Bible after this story? Because the Holy Spirit enters. They couldn't figure out what God's will was. But when the Holy Spirit filled their spirit, revived it, and filled their soul, they knew what God's will was. Because God was in them telling them. They didn't have to cast lots anymore. Chapter 2, when the day of Pentecost came, they're celebrating. They were all together in one place, much like we are here this Sunday. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. And they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. And they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. And some of you speak in a language that is not English. And some of you speak in a language that is not a language of humanity, but is a godly language. And I know that some of you are very reserved about that because you don't know how others will foresee this or take it in. Will there be an interpreter if I ever spoke out? Well, if you speak out in a tongue that is not human, there needs to be an interpreter so that the rest of us would be edified by that. Because we all want to hear from God if He has something to say to you. Now they were staying in Jerusalem. Verse 5. God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. And when they had heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? We're hearing it in Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans, and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. How wonderful it is when we can give a Bible Someone in another part of the world that can read it in their own language. That's what they were experiencing, was hearing from God. Hearing from God. They were amazed. They were perplexed. They asked one another, what does this mean? And some, however, made fun of them and said, they've had too much wine. When you speak in tongues... And I know some of you are very reserved at telling others that you do it. It's because you think they're going to call you crazy. And that's what they said of these people. <laughs> but Peter, he stands up. Remember this bull in the china shop? You still with me? Are we still tracking together? Do you need to stand up and stretch? We're coming around the corner, but we've got some verses to read. Peter, he stood up. Stand up with me, would you, just for a minute. Stand up. Peter stood up. Stretch it out. Stretch it out. When you're ready, you can sit. Peter stood up with the eleven, and he raised his voice, and he addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk, as you suppose that they are. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. It was prophesied in the Old Testament that this would happen. And in the last days, God says, I will pour out my Spirit on all people. Raise your hand and receive that. I will pour out my Spirit on all people. Your sons and your daughters, they will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. I've had dreams like I can't even explain. I have seen visions that just go beyond what I can handle. And I've had the conviction of the Holy Spirit that brings me to my knees when I'm complaining. 
And even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy and I will show wonders in the heaven above and I will show signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will turn to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Are you calling on the name of the Lord? Are you asking Jesus into your life? You will be saved. Jesus is coming again. He is going to return. Are you looking up? Are you looking at the signs on what you see on earth? Did you know that COVID is part of the end? These are preambles to our Lord coming. Verse 22, men of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs which God did among you through him. And you yourselves know this man was handed over to you by God's set purpose and foreknowledge. And you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us for that. And God raised him from the dead. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Freeing him from the agony of death because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. And David said this about Jesus. He said, I saw the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will live in hope because you will not abandon me to the grave nor will you let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. This is what God is doing for you. Brothers, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David, he died and was buried and his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet, and he knew that God had promised him on oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. And seeing what was ahead, he spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to the grave, nor did his body see decay. God has raised this Jesus to life. It is his spirit. It is a living. It is a breathing. It is an active spirit that is at work in this world today, and it is in the hearts of God's people. And God has raised this Jesus to life. And we are all witnesses of that fact. Friends, don't you see Jesus in each other? Don't you feel the Spirit? Don't you feel the Spirit? Don't you feel the warmth of His Spirit in your soul right now? Hmm. Exalted to the right hand of God, He has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit. And has poured out what you now see and hear. For David didn't ascend to heaven, and yet he said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. And when the people heard this, they were cut, they were cut to the heart. And said to Peter and the other apostles, brothers, what shall we do? Sandy, I'm going to ask you to come up here. I'm going to ask you to play a little bit. Tammy, I'm going to ask you to stand to my right here. And God's been speaking to me all morning about this message. Actually, way before this morning, as I told you. He's convicted me a while back. These people were cut to the heart. Tammy's standing there, and Sandy's going to play a little bit of music for us. I don't know. Maybe something on the guitar. And I'm going to stand over here. And how we're going to end this service today is I believe in my heart that many of you have given your lives to Jesus at some point, but you've never received the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has not empowered you because you said yes to the person of Jesus and you've kept God sort of at a distance. Kind of like this, kind of like we do with people that we struggle with, not fully trusting. I'm going to ask you today if that's you, and maybe it's not you. Maybe you just need a fresh, fresh touch from God today. 
Tammy's going to pray with you, and I'm going to pray with you over here. I'm just going to simply ask us to make a line. Man, if I was out there, I'd want that. I'd want that. Never think that you've arrived. Never think that, okay, it's all good. God and I are good. We're good. We can be better. (laughs) You can always be better, every one of us. We can be closer because we're on this side of heaven, which means sin is oppressing us and struggles and stuff happen. Maybe there's something between you and God that's keeping you from fully allowing the Holy Spirit to be at work in you, to empower you. I don't know what it is. But we need to make that right because I think you know what it is. Maybe you're blaming God for something. (laughs) He didn't show up for you like you hoped. But when these people heard this, they were cut to the heart. They said to Peter and the other apostles, brothers, what shall we do? And what did Peter say to them? This is what you do. You repent. You repent of that. In other words, I'm sorry, Lord. And you turn away from that. And you say, thank you, Lord. I will trust you. And I will receive your Holy Spirit. They repented and they were baptized. And every one of them in the name of Jesus was forgiven of their sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit when you do that. You hear what I'm saying? We come to Jesus, but we keep his spirit at a distance. Today, I want you to allow his spirit in. And the promises for you and your children and for all who are far off and for all whom the Lord our God will call. And you know when they did this? 3,000 were added to their number. Oh, God is good. Let's form that line. And let's just care for each other. Let's pray over one another. I'm going to lead by example. I'm going to go to my good wife and I'm going to have her pray for me. And then I'm going to stand over here. And then you can go to her and you can come to me. All right? I will lead by example. I need more of God and less of me.
stripped away and I simply come longing just to Bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song, for a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within through the way things appear. You're looking into. I'm coming back to the heart of love worship and it's all about you it's all about you Jesus I'm sorry Lord for thing I've made it when it's all about you it's all about you Jesus King of endless world, no one could express how much you deserve. Though I'm weak and poor, and all I have is yours, every single breath, I'll bring you more than a song, or a song in itself. Is not what you have required. You search much deeper within through the way things appear. You're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship, and it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it, cause it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord. 